Anatomy of the flexor carpi radialis muscle. Origin from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Insertion, it inserts into the base of the second and the third metacarpal bones. About 80% of the tendon will insert into the second metacarpal base and about 20% of the tendon will be inserted into the third metacarpal base. The flexor carpi radialis muscle or tendon is not a part of the contents of the carpal tunnel. Innervation, it innervates by the median nerve C6, C7. It is a wrist flexor, predominantly C7. Action of the muscle, it flexes and abducts the hand at the wrist. It is a primary wrist flexor. The tendon starts approximately 15 cm proximal to the wrist joint as a musculotendinous unit and is purely tendinous at 7 to 8 cm distally. Here there is an important point related to the flexor carpi radialis. Number one, the relationship between the flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, and the median nerve. The flexor carpi radialis is close to the median nerve. The median nerve sits ulnar to the flexor carpi radialis. Deep laceration of the flexor carpi radialis at the level of the rest could injure the median nerve. Dissection between the palmaris longus and the flexor carpi radialis can cause injury to the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve. Flexor carpi radialis tendonitis is an inflammation of the tendon occurs on golfer, racket, sports, manual labors, repetitive wrist flexion. It could be a stenosing tenosynovitis in the fibrosseous tunnel. Can it happen by itself or it can occur from fracture, arthritis, or cysts? The highest incidence of tendinitis occur in female in the fifth decade due to arthritis, especially the scaphotrabezial arthritis. Pain in the radial volar aspect of the wrist. An MRI will show inflammation around the tendon. How do you treat that? Number one, a splint and non steroidal medication. Number two, injection for the diagnosis and treatment. Three, surgical release at the last resort. Another important topic is the median nerve block and injection. Another topic is tendon transfer. The flexor carpi radialis is used in radial nerve or posterior interosseous nerve palsy to restore finger extension. The flexor carpi radialis to the extensor digitorum to restore extension of the fingers. Medial epicondylitis. It usually affects the origin of the pronator teres and the flexor carpi radialis. Then Henry approach. Henry approach of the radius. It is a volar approach and proximally it goes between the brachioradialis, which is innervated by the radial nerve, and the pronator teres, innervated by the median nerve. And distally, it goes between the brachioradialis, which is innervated by the radial nerve, and the flexor carpi radialis longus, which is innervated by the median nerve. This approach to the distal radius usually is used for reduction and fixation of distal radius fractures. The incision will be in line with the flexor carpi radialis. Now open the sheath radially and retract the tendon ulnarly. 
Incise the sheath dorsally. Be careful that the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve arises 5 cm proximal to the rest and runs ulnar to the flexor carbari dialis. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.